In this video tutorial, we're going to learn a little bit more about Microsoft Excel. And I consider this an advanced feature or technique in using Excel. And it's called Data Validation. And I have here the spreadsheet that I made in a previous video. And if you haven't seen my other Excel videos, I highly recommend that you do watch those other tutorials before watching this one. But anyway, as you see here, I have a spreadsheet listing some synth pop or new wave bands. And then also here on sheet one, I have a list of DVDs, uh, movie inventory basically. And what I'd like to do right now with these spreadsheets is add a little bit of data validation. So what is data validation? Basically what it is, is it's a way for you to almost guarantee, pretty much ensure that you have in a particular column data that is logical, data that fits certain parameters, and if we're talking about text, it helps you to ensure that the text is spelled correctly. So how could we set this up? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the data tab. When you click on the data tab, the data ribbon appears. And you can see here in the data tools group, we have a button that says data validation. Now, how do I use this? Well, step one is to select something that I want to affect. I would like to affect the data in column B. So I'm gonna select column B. The quickest way to do that is just to click on B. It highlights the entire column all the way down to infinity, basically. Now that that's selected here in the data tools group, I'm gonna click on data validation and I get this nice pop-up here that I can use to make some decisions and some choices about the data that will be in column B. First off, notice that it says any value. Right now, it'll allow anything to be typed into this column. I want to change that and make it so that it's not just any value, it's a whole number. A year should show up as a whole number. And as soon as I selected whole number, did you notice what happened? The information below changed. Now I can go in and say, I would like that data to be between two numbers that I would put here, or maybe not between those two numbers, or greater than or less than, or less than or equal to. There's all of these great options that you can put in there. So I'm gonna say between I don't know, when did New Wave and Synth Pop, etc. begin? Probably mid-70s. I'm going to say 1974. And the maximum, it'll be relevant forever. So let's just put the year maybe 3900. That should cover it. And then I could click OK. And now watch. If I type something into this box that doesn't fit those parameters, hit Enter, it warns me this value does not match the data validation restrictions defined for this cell. And I can either cancel, which gets rid of the text that I've put in there, or I can retry. And so with data validation, this will prevent people from entering data that just makes no sense, that doesn't fit certain parameters. Now, if I select that again and go back into data validation, you can see that I have some advanced options as well. And the advanced options are here. There's a tab, actually a couple of tabs, that I can click to put in some messages to whoever's using the spreadsheet. There's a checkbox that says show input message when cell is selected. So when the user clicks to enter data into one of the cells in column B, this input message could appear. Maybe the message is make sure the year is 1974 or later. I can click OK. So now, anytime someone clicks, it will remind them, make sure the year is 1974 or later, because that's about when the best genre of music was starting to develop. Similarly, I could also just select column B, go to the data tab, go to data validation, and I could go in and put in an error alert. And error alerts are pretty similar to input messages, but instead of trying to catch a mistake before it happens, an error alert just alerts the user to the fact that they made a mistake. So what I can do here is I can decide to change the style of the alert if I would like to. I can change it to a warning signal. I could change it to an informational signal or have it be a stop signal. And that's the default. I'll just leave it at that. And here in error message, I'll type in the date you entered doesn't fit the parameters of new wave slash synth pop. There you go. Now, you've probably noticed that in both of these cases, input message and error alert, I skipped entering a title. That's okay. I mean, I could put in a title if I want to, but it is also okay just to skip that and leave it blank. I'll just click okay. And so now if I click in this column, I do get a message that says, make sure that the year is 1974 or later. And then if I type and put in something that doesn't fit the parameters, I get the warning that I entered. The date you entered doesn't fit the parameters of new wave synth pop. 
So this data validation can be very, very helpful as you try to make your spreadsheets have accurate information, especially if you're sharing a spreadsheet with other people that maybe don't know Excel as well as you do. And of course, because you've been watching my videos, you know it pretty well. Real quick, I want you to notice that this works also with text. So I've selected column A that's mostly text. And when I went into data validation, it gives me the option to change it. And I can affect this text based on the length of the text. So that's just one example of how it can affect text. So the length of the text in this case would have to be less than 22 characters. So you click OK. And then if I try to type in something way too long, let's see what happens. And you can guess what happens. It says it doesn't match. So I'll just cancel that out. Okay, so that's the most common kind of data validation where you set parameters for numbers or for text, including dates and things like that. But there is one more kind, and it's pretty useful in my opinion. And for this, I'm gonna switch back to sheet number one, where I have a list of some of the movies that I have in my collection. If you aren't familiar with some of these, like The Princess Bride, like Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, and even Mystery Men is pretty sweet. If you're interested in learning about these and maybe picking them up, look in the description below this video, and there's links to some of these movies. I know most people have heard of The Princess Bride, but if you're not familiar with some of these others, there's some really good ones there that I'll recommend in the description below. But here in this particular sheet, what I'd like to do is use some data validation to force myself and anyone else using this spreadsheet to spell the genres correctly. It looks like I've done a pretty good job of spelling them correctly already, but that may not always be the case. So how could I do this? How could I use data validation to force myself to spell these correctly? Well, what I could do is set up a list over here on the right, let's say. And I'm gonna scoot over just a little bit more to the right, and I'll make a list of the genres of movies that I'm gonna have in my collection. So science fiction, fantasy, horror, and give me a minute to create a complete list of the kinds of movies that I'm gonna have, and then we'll resume the tutorial. Okay, so there's my list, and that's a pretty good list for me and my collection. So now what I can do is I can go over here to my genre column, I'll select column E, it highlights the entire column, and then I go to the data tab, data ribbon, and the data tools group. I click on data validation, but this time, instead of choosing a value or a whole number or something like that, I'm gonna go to list. And it has a few options here, but the main thing you need to know about is this, source. What you're supposed to do is click here next to source and then select the source for this. Okay, so this is the source for what's gonna go into this column. I hit enter on the keyboard, click okay, and now watch what happens. Whenever I click in this column, anywhere in the column, I get a little button here off to the right that I can click and I can choose science fiction or I can choose children's or I can choose comedy, whatever I wanna choose. And it forces me to spell it correctly. Now, let's say I just type something in there. Maybe I wanna type in family, I misspell it. Look, it doesn't let me because it's a data validation issue and it's not fitting the parameters of this list that I created. So this really is a great method for preventing people from misspelling words. Now, if you don't wanna to have to go over here and click on the button each time, you can hold Alt and tap the down arrow key on the keyboard, and then you could use the down arrow key again to select the one that you wanna choose. So that's another option if you don't wanna use the mouse to click the button and select from the list that you made. So isn't that great? I really like data validation. There are a couple more things though that you might wanna know about data validation. The first is that notice the word genre has a button as well. So if I try to change this from genre to something else, it's gonna force that change to match these parameters. If I don't want that to be the case, I can click on the cell like I am, and then I can go to data validation here on the data ribbon and click and then I can choose clear all, and that is gonna clear just all of the data validation for this particular cell, not for the ones below it. So now the cell with the title genre in it doesn't have that button that the other cells do have. The next thing that you should also know about data validation is that the way things appear in the list does affect how they appear over here. So these words are not in alphabetical order and it would be nice if they were. So I'm gonna click and drag to select just the range that I would like to alphabetize, and then I'll go to data, and I'll choose sort A to Z, and it sorted just that text, nothing else, A to Z. So now, let's try it. When I click on the button, all my options come in alphabetically in that list. 
So that's nice to know. Now, what if, heaven forbid, I get a romance DVD, a romantic comedy or something like that? If I go in and just add that to my genre list over here on the right, let's see if it works. Is it going to add it over here to my drop down list? No, it didn't. It didn't work. Now, the reason why is because my original list was set up to be this. And if I add something below that, to the right, above, to the left, it's not going to be added to my drop down list over here on the left. But if I were to add it somewhere in the middle, then it might work. So let's try that out. I'm going to click on this and try to drag it up into the middle of this list somewhere. Now, if I just click and drag, it says there's data already here. Do you want to replace it? I'll, I'll say no. I'll cancel that. So the trick is to hold shift on the keyboard and then you can click and drag and drop it in. And now let's try it. If I click on a cell in my genre column, click the button. Look, romance is now included there in it. And science fiction, which is at the bottom, you might have thought it would have been pushed off the list. It's still there, thank goodness. But uh, unfortunately, romance is also included now in this list. But it's not alphabetical. So again, I might want to click on it and hold shift and then drag it down in a more alphabetical order. So those are some nice things to know about with regard to data validation. The last thing that I think you really need to know regarding data validation is what do we do with this list that's sitting out here? I can't just delete it. If I do, it will ruin my drop down list over here. And what if someone that I share this spreadsheet with, what if they delete it? What if someone in my family accidentally deletes it or messes it up? So what you can do, you could do a number of things. You could highlight that text and you could right click and cut it and then paste it onto another sheet. And at least in modern versions of Excel, the last few versions of Excel, that will work for you. See that? The drop down list still works even though the list has been moved. It's been moved to sheet five in this case. Another thing you could try if you want, you could right click on the column number and you could choose hide and it hides the column. And you could do that here on sheet five or sheet three or just here on sheet one. I could have just hidden it there. The other thing you could do, of course, is you could just put it way over to the far right where it's probably not going to be seen. There's lots of ways that you can hide that list once you've established it. Of course, it is a good idea to remember where it is so that you can add to it if you ever need to. So I'm going to unhide that. So I hope that you find data validation to be helpful as a way to require the contents of a cell or a column or a row to fall within certain parameters, whether it be numbers, whether it be text, and it's also wonderful for creating drop down lists. Thanks for watching this tutorial and please consider connecting with me on my social media websites like Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And please do subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos about technology for teachers and students. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click like below and watch for a new video at least every Monday.